Good morning, pilots, and welcome to War Thunder Bootcamp, a series dedicated to helping you get better at War Thunder. In today's episode, we'll be taking a look at close air support. Close air support is a key aspect to ground RB. A well placed bomb can take out even the most armored opponents standing in your team's way. In order to use this powerful tool, though, you first need to learn how to use it. I'll guide you through all techniques so that you can ground pound more efficiently. Now, let's start in the controls. I know, probably not what you're expecting, but your keybinds are very important when you're trying to use CAS. Let me explain the main keybinds. First off, roll axis. This one's pretty self-explanatory. It controls your ailerons and rolls your plane. It's pretty useful when you're trying to level out your plane when using rockets. I have mine set to A and D, pretty standard stuff. Next up, we have pitch axis, arguably the most useful thing in here. This one controls your elevator. When you're pulling out from a dive, these keys will save you from crashing onto the ground. Your mouse might not let you go out fast enough, so make sure to set a key for this one. I have mine set to S and W, you might use shift and control or something else, but make sure it's something easy to press. We'll skip over the yaw axis since it's not that important for Cass. What is important though is your throttle. Some of you might have it set to your mouse wheel, but I suggest putting it on a key. What this will let you do is change your speed quicker, and it might help you escape certain situations. You'll need to cut your speed when diving and gain speed quickly afterwards, and the key will be a lot easier for that purpose. I have mine set to shift and control, but it's up to you. Next up is the instructor, and what you want to do is just disable everything. This will give you full control of the plane and stop it from changing direction automatically. Next up, this is optional, but you can set up a keybind for bomb tracking. With this key, you can see where your bomb lands. It's not that important, but it might help you out. Now that the settings are out of the way, let's talk about custom battles. This will be your testing ground for close air support. A lot of people don't know that you can create your own custom battle, but it's a vital tool for practice. To use it, all you gotta do is go to the game mode selection screen, pick custom battles, and then click on create session. Pick any map you want. Next, pick your preferred enemy tier, and make sure to enable AIs. Set the number of players, put a password on the lobby, and jump in. There are no repair costs, no spawn points, and no rewards in here, so do whatever you want. It's a great place to practice all sorts of skills like bombing, using rockets, and getting used to your new controls. And it's what I'll be using throughout the video. First up, we have bombs. These are one of the easiest and also deadliest to use for ground pounding. Before you get into your plane though, set your bomb fuse to a minimum of 2 seconds. If you don't, you might damage your own plane with your bomb. Alright, let's get into the match. So, the usual tactic is just to stay around 700 meters in altitude, dive towards the enemy and drop your bomb. This one's pretty simple to pull off. Aiming might seem a bit tricky at first, but trust me, once you get the hang of it, it's quite easy. The key to bombing is to aim slightly above your target and not directly on it. Since gravity exists, your bomb will land in front of the enemy. What you want to do is aim about 2 centimeters or an inch away from the target. You should go directly towards your target and then drop your bomb when you're pulling up. This does depend on some factors though, mainly your speed, where your target is, and how fast your target is going. I made a simple visual guide to demonstrate. As you can see, your speed and gravity affect the bomb's path. So, if you aim directly at the target, the bomb won't actually reach it. You have to aim slightly higher to compensate for gravity. If you go faster, the bomb will go farther and vice versa. However, this changes if the target is moving. If the enemy is moving, you'll have to adjust your aim to compensate. So, let's say the enemy is moving to the right at a fast pace. You'll have to aim to the right, but also a bit further to get the kill. In the next example, the target is moving towards you. To counter their movement, you'll have to aim directly on the enemy to kill them. While this may seem complicated, in practice, it's quite simple. As I said, get into a custom battle and practice all you want. This is all just muscle memory, there is no trick to getting it right on the first go. I suggest practicing with 250kg bombs, since they're big enough to take out most enemies you see, but small enough to improve your aim. And just so you know, if you jet out in a plane in custom battles, you'll automatically restore your weapons and payload. So that was medium level bombing. Now let's take a look at low level and high level bombing. First off, low level bombing. As you might have guessed, low level bombing is about staying close to the ground. What you want to do is stay below 200 meters or so and keep your speed up. Be careful not to crash into any trees. Low level bombing is best used when you're behind the enemy since they won't be expecting you to come from there. So, low altitude, high speed, and approaching the target. You'll have to drive your bombs much sooner since you're going so fast. As you can see, your speed is a lot higher, and your altitude is a lot lower. What this means is that gravity will be the main force that's pulling the bomb down, so you have to aim above the target. If done right, you should be flying parallel to the ground, aiming close to 0 degrees, and dropping the bomb before you fly over your target. This method is best used in fighters, since they have the highest speed and best maneuverability. Now we'll take a look at high level bombing. This one's pretty straightforward, get some altitude and dive directly on the enemy. Once you reach about a kilometer in altitude, start diving. You should dive at around 60 to 80 degrees, but make sure to cut your throttle to avoid crashing. Use air brakes if you have them. Since you're going at a similar angle to gravity, you can aim directly on the target. This method is best used in dive bombers, since heavier planes might not pull up in time. Just keep your speed and altitude in check and you should be fine. Now before you get into your favorite plane and start bombing some tanks, here are a list of things you need to know. 
First off, don't bomb lightly armored tanks, because like overtop and light tanks can be easily killed with machine guns or cannons. Spare your payload for bigger targets like heavy tanks. Next, know the order in which your bombs drop. Some planes can have multiple types of bombs in a single loadout, where some bombs are bigger than the others. Save the bigger bombs for heavier opponents, and the lighter bombs for stuff like medium and light tanks. And finally, learn about the position of your bombs. Some bombs are wing-mounted, while others are under the fuselage. The fuselage mounted bombs drop directly on target, while the wing-mounted bombs drop in pairs around the enemy. This shouldn't be too much of an issue with larger bombs, but if you have less than 100kg, you need to pick one side to aim from. Next up are rockets. Now, I'm gonna be honest, there's no special trick to learn this quickly. Rockets are a lot harder to aim than bombs, and they don't guarantee a one-hit kill. In realistic battles, rockets drop two at a time, meaning that if you aim directly in the middle, the rockets will just go to the left and right of the tank and not actually hit it. So first, what you need to do is pick a side to aim from. After you pick the side, level your plane and get closer. The optimal distance is about 200 to 400 meters away from your target. After you're close enough, start aiming. The rocket crosshair works like this. Every line indicates 200 meters. So, what you want to do is aim between the 200 and 400 meter line. This takes quite a bit of practice to nail down, so as I said, get into a custom battle and practice. A good tactic is to fire a test rocket to see where it lands, and then adjust your aim accordingly and fire again. Also, here's a handy trick, you can use a crosshair to guess how far the enemy is. If you hover over a target and compare the crosshair size, it'll show you the distance between you and the enemy. The first line indicates 800 meters, the second one is 600, then 400, and finally 200 meters. However, it gets pretty inaccurate by the time you're that close, so just get to around 400 meters and start aiming. Every rocket type is different. Some are very fast and easy to aim, while others need a lot of accuracy. Rockets, like bombs, spend a lot of muscle memory, so keep practicing and eventually you'll get it right. Now that aiming's out of the way, let's talk about some important factors. First off, you need to level your plane for a good launch. If your plane is doing all sorts of rolls, aiming rockets will be a lot harder. To make it easier for you, keep your plane level and fire when you're positioned correctly. And this is where the ailerons come in. Remember when I told you to set a key bind for your ailerons? Well, they're very important to keep your plane straight. If you're still wiggling after a turn, level out your plane and then launch your rockets. Second, know the position of your rockets. Much like bombs, rockets can be all over your plane. The rockets closer to the fuselage need less leading, while the ones on the tip of your wings need a lot of adjustment. Learn the order in which your rockets launch and aim accordingly. Third, know which type of rocket you're working with. There are two main types of rockets, high explosive and heat. Rockets like T-10s and FFARs are heat rockets, and they're probably the best you'll find for anti-tank purposes. But stuff like h are high explosive rockets, which means they won't deal much damage to an enemy tank. To see if a rocket is high explosive, check the stat card. If it has the same penetration values over all angles, it's HE. So, choose the right rockets for the job. Fourth, pick your angle of approach. Like bombs, you can use rockets from different angles. You can dive at a 90 degree angle, stick close to the ground, or just dive from medium altitude. Aiming is different with all these techniques, so practice them all and see which one you like best. Fifth, know where to aim for. Using rockets against the front of a tank won't do much. You should attack from the sides, the top, or from the rear to pen reliably. And lastly, if you have a lot of small rockets, set up a keybind for rocket salvo. This will let you fire a barrage of rockets by holding down a key, and it might help with pins that have lots of rockets. And lastly, we have cannons. Cannons are the easiest to use, since aiming them is pretty straightforward, and they can be very effective if used properly. Now, there are two types of cannons for casts, large anti-tank cannons and smaller multi-purpose cannons. Let's talk about the smaller ones first. Generally, these multi-purpose cannons come in either 30mm or 20mm form. Many of these can be found in the ground attack line on the German air tree, with the ME410s and the BF110s. Using these are pretty simple, just aim at your target and fire a salvo. But just like rockets, you gotta engage from above, the rear, or from the sides, otherwise you might not pen. The bigger cannons, on the other hand, are a lot more interesting. Planes like the PBJ, HS-129, and the P-108 are notorious for the large anti-tank cannons. They're very deadly, you can usually take out an enemy in one shot. These are slightly harder to aim, but once you get used to it, it's quite simple. Some planes even have special scopes for the cannons, but some people find the third-person camera easier. Hop into a custom battle, test your aim, and get used to it. But while the aiming might be simple, you gotta keep some things in mind. A handy trick is to set up different keys for your machine guns and cannons to avoid wasting ammo. A common setup is left click for machine guns and right click for cannons. You can even use your keyboard. Personally, I use Q for MGs and E for cannons. Choose something that works for you. Another important thing is to not under or overestimate your weapons. 50 cals can be quite deadly when you attack from the top, and it could take out engines, crew members, or even the entire tank with a good salvo. But some 20 mils are pretty trash when used as anti-tank weapons. Check the stat card and take a look at the penetration values of your rounds. 
And speaking of ammo, that's another important factor. A lot of anti-tank cannons have their ammo set up in an ABAB style. So your first shot will be armor piercing, then the second one will be high explosive, then AP, then HE, and repeat. Check how much ammo you start with and keep the tight shot in the back of your head. If you have high explosive loaded, you can just shoot anywhere and load your armor piercing round. You can unlock full AP belts with a modification, but until then, you'll have to use the sock belts. And lastly, don't jam your guns. Your weapons are useless if you can't shoot them. It's better to fire a short burst, then turn around and shoot again, rather than jam your guns and run salvo. Some of the bigger anti-tank cannons can overheat pretty quickly, so keep that in mind. So, now you know how to aim and use your ordnance. Before you hop into a match though, here are a couple of things to keep in mind. First off, know when to spawn on a plane. There's no point spawning in cats if half your team's already in the air. If you notice that the caps are undefended or in the hands of the enemy, get in a tank and secure the objective. And if you notice that all your allies are in planes, tell them to spawn on more tanks. Communication is key to winning a match. Second, consider your spawn points. Make sure you can spawn on at least one other vehicle before hopping into a plane. Nobody likes someone who gets in a plane and leaves the match after crashing. Make sure to save enough SP to spawn in after your cast. Third, pick a good plane. Sure, you can bring your tier 2 fighter at 6.7, but you'll be very ineffective. Take time to grind out a good cast plane for your tier and you'll be performing much better. Fourth, pick your targets well. There's no point killing an AFK enemy in their spawn. Target enemies who are posing a threat to your team, like people capping a point, someone who's about to kill an ally, or heavy tanks that can be killed by your friendlies. Fifth, keep your speed up. Cast planes are easy prey for enemy fighters and anti-air vehicles. By staying fast, you can avoid your enemies and retreat to friendly SPAA vehicles or fighters. If you notice your speed is low, stop ground pounding, fly away from the battlefield and get some speed up. Sixth, don't overcommit. Always pull up on time when you're diving in on an enemy. While this may seem obvious, it happens to the best of us. If you know your plane is slow when pulling up, make sure to recover sooner. You'll do yourself and your friends a favor if you stay in the air. And that leads me to the next tip, spot enemies. Even if you drop your payload, shooting enemies and spotting them can be extremely helpful. Your team will appreciate it a lot if you can provide some reconnaissance. And lastly, if you're in a fighter in ground or B, defend your team from enemy casts. While scouting is important, it should be a secondary mission if there are enemy planes up. So, take care of the enemy planes first and then continue to scout. And if you're in a heavy ground strike plane, drop your payload first and then take care of the enemy planes. You probably won't outturn them, so try to head on them or run to your friendly SBA or fighters. Well, that about covers it. Now get out there and rain hell on the enemy. Dismissed.